as um, so this program is a community-based program. Is there a name for it? It's the Ricefield Fisheries Enhancement Project. Okay, so um, could you say the Ricefield Fishery Enhancement okay. Project, yeah. what we learned? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. so can you tell me about the program? So this Feed the Future funded Ricefield Fisheries Enhancement Program started off with the first phase which ended in January, which ended this year and the, the second phase is continuing. So some of the lessons that we learned in the first phase is the importance of community fish refuges. This is where the sanctuaries where you have broodstock that migrate with the waters into the rice fields as they become flooded. Now importantly, these community fisheries uh, these community refugees are governed by the by the by the communities themselves. By the CFRs. By right? the CFRs. Yep. By the community. By, by, by the communities. So 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 the governance is extremely important, and the empowerment of these community, the members of the of the, of the communities and the empowerment of these community members as well as the awareness of the importance of this fisheries makes this approach a success or not. So the first, the first important point is having a very engaged and empowered community. This helps along with there is a Great, there has been a great level of decentralization. So when you show the communities about how important this type of fisheries are, what they can do to manage them properly, for example, developing their community fish refuge, for example, making sure the canals from the fish refuge to the rice fields are open and not blocked, for example, um, ensuring that there is a diversity of fish species in the community refuge. When they realize the importance of this, then they know how to manage these resources. But importantly, they can also seek funding from the government at provincial level to help them in their activities. As we know, the climate, the, the climate is variable from year to year. The, the floodings and the levels of floodings have also been different in the three years we've worked in this, uh, in, worked with these communities. But one of the things that we have seen and reported is that um, the diversity of fish species with the improved management practices has increased. Diversity of fish species has increased. What we have also seen is there is some tendency when the floods are good to have a higher production of fish, total production in the rice, in, in the rice fields. However, this must be held together with the fact that there is a greater pressure on the fisheries, meaning more people are depending on the fisheries and more people are fishing. But when you take the total production into, con into consideration, then there's an increased production and an increased diversity. Another important lesson we have learned is that the benefits of this system is different from depending on the, on, on, on the household. So a poor household, which depends a lot on the rice field fisheries for sustenance, for livelihoods, and for fish for consumption, benefits much more than richer households who have the opportunity to buy diverse foods from the rural markets. And, uh, do you have any idea uh, what the percentage of sustenance farmers are in this country, I've heard different numbers, you know, from 85% to 92%. What are your, do you have? Well, any? it depends on where you are, because some of the, some of, some of the communities around, around, some of the fish refuge com uh, communities are, 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 are better, are, have, okay. have so a better, it yeah. It varies widely. It varies so. widely. How many, um, so you said that you were going from 40 to about 160, 170? 70, yes. Yeah. Yeah. How, do, you have, do you have any idea how many CFRs there are in the country? 
Is, I mean, I know that it, it's how you define it, you know? Like yeah. Thousands? No. Oh yes, thousands. Okay. okay. And um, and and this is a uh, and this is a commitment by the government and by the ministry that they would target as many community fish refuges as possible it's for this kind of management community management practices. Yeah. So. So first of all, this project is being funded by Feed the Future. And therefore, there are certain criteria that we'd like to meet. We'd like to improve, um, imp improve communities with respect to livelihoods, uh, with respect to the levels of poverty, with, the, with respect to household income, and importantly also, with respect to the importance of fish for nutrition. So, one of the areas that we are focusing on is within communities, the households that where there are women of reproductive age, and this would be nearly all households, and households where there are young children, so that we can, at the same time that we increase productivity and diversity of the fisheries, we can also promote increased consumption among women and young children. And we know, for example, we know from other studies in Cambodia that in young children, their level of consumption of fish is quite low. We know from the scientific evidence that small fish species, especially consumed wow. whole, is critical for growth in children, development, and cognition. So fish plays a very important role in the, in the, in the nutrition of young children. Also, with not only starting from the child, but in the first thousand days of life, meaning from pregnancy to the first phase of exclusive breastfeeding, the first six months of the child, and on, onto the child's second birthday. So in this space, we have a great opportunity to improve growth, development, and cognition by promoting consumption of small fish and using the resources that we have in the rice field fisheries to increase production, productivity, and diversity of fish species. Fish is important, from the scientific evidence we have, globally, we know that fish is unique in its uh, nutrient composition, and especially small fish in its contribution to micronutrient, vitamins and minerals inta intake, as well as essential fats and animal protein. All essential nutrients for proper, optimal growth and development. We also know from focus group discussions and from other surveys carried out in the field that children do not receive as part of their diet fish and especially not small fish. And if they do, it's quite late in life, after they're about one and a half years of age. So we wish to to shift the intake of fish in young children from the start of complementary feeding at six months of age. And therefore we have developed recipes and messages and, and used demonstrations to try to promote intake of fish and especially false small fish among children from the age of six months. Of six months. So the way, one of the ways we have done it is what, which you have seen in the field. Make a porridge with rice, which is the staple of Cambodia, and some vegetables and small fish, which is first cooked and mashed so that, you, so that there are no issues about bones or the head or, or, uh, and use this as a nutritious complementary food for the young child. You know, that too, I mean, I know that's a lot of... Yeah, we haven't reached, we, we, we haven't reached that stage as yet. Okay. That, that, that demands that you do very focused studies with small groups. But what we have been able to show is with this 
with the, with, with the first phase of this project that we have increased of fish consumption in young children and we have seen that we have shifted the age of introduction of fish in the diets of young children. Do you know if the mothers are really doing it when they're pregnant? Do you have any idea? Um, we haven't we haven't yet worked a lot okay. with the pregnant and the and, and the, uh, the pregnant and the lactating women because we do not we need some more information on consumption patterns of women which we are, which we are now now trying to get okay. um, but we knew the consumption patterns of children and we knew that animal source foods and especially fish was not introduced at six months of age the oh. recommended age for complementary feeding it's amazing. i would say importantly is the interactions and the and the communications that we have at community level and household level in order to ensure that the um, that is that the promotion activities we come with are being adopted by the communities and our household level. So it's important that we have a family-based approach. If you take, for example, the fisheries, that's mainly male-dominated. If you take, for example, the cooking and the feeding of the child, that's mainly female dominated so what we'd like to do is to have a family-based approach where we go where we where everyone understands the value of the fish production the accessibility and the utilization of this fish for improved nutrition well that's one component of of the program compared to the you know managing the resources and putting in the physical improvements for management of the rice field fishery system but the combination of knowing the importance of fish for your child and the importance of fish for women in reproductive age is important and i think everyone and and i think when 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 someone gets the understanding of this then it's, it's easily take known because I think in all communities globally, all families are interested in their children being well and their children being smart and being able to do well throughout life.